Hello, and welcome to this week's video on creating text in Fusion. I wanted to start out by saying we've hit 10,000 subscribers. So thank you for all of you that watch and subscribe. It really means a lot. So let's dive right in. So in this video, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks and methods with using text inside of Fusion. You can see I'm already in my sketch. I'll go ahead and say create text. And in the dialogue, you can see there's two different kinds, regular text and text on a path, and we'll cover both. So I'm just going to create some regular text. I'm just going to kind of draw a, a box of kind of where I want the text to be. And you can see it comes up with this sample text. Well, I'll just start typing in the text that I want. Uh, next is the font, and you can see the different types of fonts that you can choose. And you'll notice there's a line right above my cursor. Above that line are what we call the simple fonts. These are fonts you might use if you're doing like etching or engraving or something like that, where they're like single line fonts. And then all of the fonts below the line are your standard um, like Windows type fonts that you would use um, in other programs like Microsoft Word, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and pick, let's just say, for example, let's just do Arial. Then you'll notice you can do like bold or italic or both. Um, you can change the text height. So I could say, for example, 0.5. And then you have character spacing. So this allows you, and you'll notice if I hover over it, it has a percent to sign. So this is character spacing um, in percent. So if I want to space these apart 50% more, I could type in 50. And you can see how that's spaced those apart. If I type in 100, it'll you know, space them apart 100% more. So I'll go ahead and reset that back to zero for the standard spacing. You can flip the text horizontal or vertical if you need to. Um, you can also rotate the text like so if you need them to be, you know, vertical if need be. And then you have the alignment. So you can see align left, center, or right. And you'll notice that it's aligning it um, in the size of the box that I drew. So I'll go ahead and align that to the left. And then you also have alignment, for example, top middle or bottom. So for example, if I align the center and the middle, you'll notice that that text is centered inside that box. And that might be handy because you might want to position this in a particular location. For example, I could say coincident that corner to that point there, and that's where that text is. Or if I edited that text, I could say I want it aligned left, and top left or bottom left. And now you'll see the font is located in the lower left. I'll go ahead and I'll just put it in the middle like so for now, and I'll say OK. I'll go ahead and finish my sketch for now and show that now this is just a regular font. I can right click on it and say press pull. And if I drag this arrow, I can actually extrude this text. So I didn't have to do anything special with the text. I just clicked on it, right clicked and said extrude, or I could even come in here and say revolve. Let's go ahead and select the font. What's the axis? Let's select that as the axis. And we could do like one of these, you know, 3D printed type things where um, you might want it sitting on your desk or something like that, where um, you know, it has your name or something like that. So you can create some pretty cool stuff with just the regular font, regular text. I can also come back and edit the uh, sketch and then edit the text. So I could come back and say, I want to pick a different font and say, OK, and it will change my font. OK, um, next I'll do the text on a path. So I'll go ahead and just create a quick, for example, like three point arc. Let's just do something like this. And then if I say create text and I click on text on a path, when I click on that path, you can see that it's going to put the text on that path. So once again, I'll, I'll type in fusion. Um, and in this case, it's aligning it centered. I could say align it left, align it right. We'll keep it centered. We'll make it smaller just so you can kind of see how it's definitely keeping that centered. Uh, we could change our font or whatever. Um, and 
You can also say fit to path. And so it's going to space the text to fit onto that path. So if I were to come in here and change the height, let's just say 0.5, you can see how, again, it's going to try and fit that to the path, um, depending on what your font size is, et cetera, or the length of your path. You can even do more complex paths. So let me just do like a, a spline like so. Um, let me do something like this. I'll create the text. And you can see how the, the text is following that. If I turn off fit to path, you can see how it's a little bit closer. I could add some character spacing in here, let's say 25% more. That way, um, if you know, you'll notice when it was set to zero, these were pretty close together. So I might want to space those apart just a little bit like that. And um, I'll go ahead and let's just keep this, you know, sample text. <laughs> I'll say OK. And what's neat about this is if you were to change the, the path, the text updates accordingly. It's pretty cool. So that's how you can create regular text and text on a path. So now let's take it kind of to the next level. So in this example here, um, I'm in the manufacturer workspace. And I just have you know a block of wood or something like that with some text. And I want to v-carve this text into this block of wood. You don't need to um, convert the text. You don't need to cut or extrude or emboss the text into the block of wood or anything like that. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and create a engrave toolpath. I'll go ahead and select a tool and let's do um, an engrave tool. And I'll just pick this um, you know, 5, 0.5 diameter um, engrave or chamfer mill. You can kind of see what that looks like. And it has like a, a flat bottom in this case. And then it's asking for the geometry. And all I'm going to do is pick the font. And you can kind of see it figured out everything. I'll just say OK. I didn't change anything else. And I'll go ahead and turn off the model. And so we can see a live preview of what it did. So, and again, you can kind of see the, the flat bottom because of the, the tool, but it used that font and figured out how to engrave that font into our block of wood, for example. If I were to come back and let's just edit this and pick a different tool, this one has a sharp tip and it's a 45 degree. I'll select that. Say OK. You'll notice we get a, a different result. So we don't have that flat bottom. We get the, the sharp V-carve style result. And if I go back into my design and let's edit our sketch, edit our text. So that's the Arial font. Um, let's just do, for example, like Artifact. Now let's do something a little bit different. Um, Bellhouse, let's try that one there. Say OK. Finish our sketch. We'll go back into uh, Manufacture and recalculate the um, toolpath. We now get the Bellhouse result font. So again, I didn't have to do any, anything spectacular uh, with the text or the font to make this work. Um, didn't have to engrave or like, I'm sorry, I didn't have to extrude or create a three-dimensional design for this, the tool to follow along or anything like that. Now, there might be situations where you have to do something to make things work. Um, so here's an example. We, we want to do an emboss. And I created a really kind of a funky um, shape underneath. So I'm going to go in here and say emboss. What's my sketch profile? I'm just going to click on that font, that text, and then I'll click on that face. And you can see that it actually embossed that text onto this complex kind of surface. So if I say OK, we get that result, which is pretty cool. However, I'm going to undo. If we edit that text and let's maybe change that from the Arial font 
to something a little bit more complex. Let's do something like maybe um, like this brush script. You know, it's a little bit more organic. I'll say OK. We'll finish our sketch. And let's just do the emboss again. What's our sketch profile? What's our faces? You'll notice that I get an error message. Can't create the emboss feature. So it can't use this particular font to create the emboss. But let's say I want to use this font. So this last method I'm going to show you is kind of a last resort. Um, I don't recommend using this unless you absolutely have to, and I'll show you why. So if I select this text and I right mouse click, you'll notice I have two options here. I can edit the text or I can explode the text. Now if I say edit text, I, I get in here and I can pick you know, the size and the font and all that kind of stuff. If I say explode text, it basically projects the text onto our sketch. So you can kind of think of it as almost like a projection. And you'll see these are like individual line segments, etc. Now I cannot change these. I can't like stretch this out or move these points around. I can't even use like the move command to make changes to you know that point and drag it over. You can see like nothing really happens. The only thing I can do is, for example, like trim and extend. And the only reason I'm pointing that out is because you'll notice in this area here, the font overlaps, okay? And we don't want some overlapping lines, so I am gonna trim there and there, so we get a nice sharp point, and I'll trim there and there, so we get a nice sharp point. And then here's a cool little trick. I'm still in my trim command. Instead of just clicking, I'm gonna click and hold, and now I'm basically painting over those lines. So I didn't have to go click, 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 I just kind of dragged over those lines to, uh, to select those. And now we've trimmed away all those lines. This is a nice looking profile. I'll finish my sketch. And now let's try the emboss. Okay, so here's my sketch profiles. In fact, there's two of them now. What's my faces? That's my faces. And you'll notice that did work. So I was able to use that font to create the emboss. Now, here's the drawback. I can't go back. I can't make changes. I, if I come back to this text here, I can no longer edit this. I can't select it, right mouse click, and say change the font size or change its location or anything like that. Once you explode the text, that's it. So that's why I kind of say it's a last resort. Um, make sure your text is exactly how you want it, where it's positioned, the size, everything, before you explode the text. But it does allow you to do some more complex things that you might not be able to do with other fonts. So hopefully you learned some new tips and tricks with the text command in this video. And once again, thanks for being a loyal viewer and subscriber. And hopefully we'll see you on a future video. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. If you need help learning Fusion, visit my webpage at cadedllc.com. And as always, have fun learning Fusion.